Hello everyone, welcome to the Mission Church. It's awesome to have you join us today. If you haven't already, take a few moments to say hello and let us know who is worshiping with us today. We love the opportunity to greet each other uh, in fellowship online. It never ceases to amaze me how impactful the little things could be. The sunshine breaking through on a cloudy day, a new pair of socks, finding unexpected cash in your pocket, and a word of encouragement from someone close to you. Okay, so maybe the sock thing is just me, but honestly, encouragement from the right person at the right time is like a good meal. It just fills me up and sustains me no matter what is going on. Even the memory of certain times of encouragement is enough to lift my spirits and remind me of the good times and good friends. The Apostle Paul identified this as a key attribute for the church. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 Therefore encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Encouragement goes a long way in creating unity in the church. Brothers and sisters in Christ building each other up and yet we still need this reminder. I know I do. So be free with your encouragement towards one another. Thank God for those who encourage you in your life And let us come together now to praise our God. God of mercy, there is 
that bears the burden where another died for me there is another in the fire all my dad left for dead beneath the water a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between what remains in me I'm this reckoning Either way I will bow to the things of this world I know I will never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me is another in the water holding back the seas should I ever need reminding what power set me free there is a grave that holds nobody now that power lives in me there is another in the fire Whoa. there is another in the fire another in the fire oh, there is another in the fire oh, I can see I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him I can hear the roar in the heavens as a space between west and I can feel the ground Shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all so come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning I know I will never be alone that's right I know I will never be alone there'll be another in the fire standing next to me 
see another in the water holding back the seas should I ever need reminding how good you've been to me I'll count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll Count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be What if we could love the way Jesus did? Passionately, faithfully, powerfully. What if the way we love could make a difference in the world around us? What if that love looked at everyone the way God does? A love which doesn't see the past, but is consumed by a desire to see people come to know Jesus. A love which is patient and kind, not envious or prideful. A love which puts others before ourselves, chooses peace over anger, love which protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Do we love like this? Do we love like Jesus? Maybe it's time to ask a simple question. How can we love better? Watching the events of the last year has, has really proven our need for a Savior. Not just a Savior to rescue our souls, but a, a Savior to transform our hearts, to, to transform our actions, the way we treat each other. To see stories in the news of people hating each other, hurting their communities, tearing each other apart both physically and verbally. To see friends rip into each other online in such hateful and hurtful ways, with little concern uh, or, or, or value for the other person. Uh, people using sarcasm to make their point while belittling the beliefs of somebody else. It's been heartbreaking to watch all of this unfold uh, as division occurs, not just uh, across the country, but in our own communities and in, even in our own homes. Friends, we, we need Jesus to direct our hearts. When Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? He didn't establish something new. He reached back all the way to the Old Testament in order to provide direction and encouragement to the believer. And in fact, this is a verse that we've used quite a few times here at, at the Mission Church. Jesus reinforces what has always been important in, in order to live out our faith well. Jesus said in Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40, he said, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So the greatest commandment that we could, we could live out is to love God with everything we have, with all of our heart, mind, body, and soul. And the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, Jesus is teaching us that we're designed for relationship, relationship with our Heavenly Father, but also relationship with each other, that we, we need each other. Uh, it, it, yet we overlook this important truth. We dismiss uh, how much we really need each other. In fact, we are quick to devalue having relationships with other people. Uh, we devalue people's worth with our words and with our actions. You see, friendships have been undervalued by a culture that has redefined what it means to love one another. If you're a note taker, this is a good time to open up the Mission Church app and follow along. But friendships have been undervalued by a culture that has redefined what it means to love one another. We've lost our ability to love others in the way that that we want to be loved ourselves. There's little regard or accountability for our words and actions. 
We love others when they agree with us. We love others when, when, they are, are, when their actions are like ours. We love people until they do something that we disagree with. We love someone unless we have something else or something better going on. See, culture has redefined the way we love others. Friendships have become conditional, disposable. They've even become utilitarian to some degree, especially in these isolating times of the pandemic, we've lost the ability to treat each other with compassion, with kindness, to treat each other with grace. Words fly like arrows with little concern for how they will be received. Friendships, godly and loving spiritual friendships, are overlooked in our modern world. In fact, it has been redefined greatly by the advancement of technology as we, as we relate to each other on a very different level anymore. Now, let's be honest. Having, having friends is difficult. It requires time, effort, energy. It requires your resources. It requires an investment uh, in order to maintain healthy friendships. Relationships are messy. But we are all designed to be in community, first and foremost with God, And secondly, we're designed to be in relationship with each other. We all need spiritual friendships. Let's pray as we we unpack and rediscover the importance of meaningful, godly friendships in our life. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you that we can gather together, Lord, whether uh, online or in person, Lord God, that we can gather together and open your word and that we can receive your teaching, Lord. As we open your word today, may you open our eyes and our hearts to the importance of having spiritual, godly friendships in our life. And Father, may you begin to reveal uh, next steps that we can be taking uh, to grow in this area of our life and our faith. It's in your son's name that we pray these things, Father. Amen. Well, we're in this series called The Four Loves, and we're unpacking the four basic kinds of love, storge, philia, eros, and agape. Last week, we looked at the foundational love of storge. This is the natural love and affection that we develop to what's familiar. This is common between a parent and a child. We see this kind of love develop between siblings, but this is also a love or affection that develops outside in other relationships. We should resist the temptation to devalue one of the loves by comparing it to the other loves. You would never diminish the value of silver by comparing it to gold. It's not that silver becomes less valuable just because it's being compared to gold. Yes, this would, yet this is what we do. We, we naturally value one love above another kind of love. We, we give more attention and value to one kind of love instead of seeing the need and value of each kind of love in our life. I believe few people value friendships because few have truly experienced it in their life. Spiritual and personal growth happens best when we have friendships, people that we can do life with. Storge, philia, eros, and agape are all critical for us to develop in our life. Affection creates this foundation of how we love. Philia is the connection that gets created between people over a common interest, right? It's that moment where you're connecting with somebody and you say, wait a minute, you're interested in this too? I thought I was the only one, right? It's that aha moment that we have with somebody as we we discover that common bond, that common interest in something that we both enjoy doing. I worked with two guys that met because of work. And, and during the course of a meeting, they both discovered that they are, are total Star Wars nerds, like, like recite the entire movie, even the, the fake languages, parts of the movie, they could recite the entire thing back and forth. There was a, a touching moment after the meeting where one guy looked at the other one and he's like, hey, do you think it would be cool if we hung out outside of work? Right? It was a, a real touching moment, but it was this bond because they, they realized we not only have work in common, but we have this other really... It, big interest in our life uh, in common, and so they became fast friends. Philia means close friendship or brotherly love. This kind of love is a choice. You see, we can't choose our family. We're, we're born into our family, but we can choose our friends. 
close friendships are needed for our soul. See, we need people in our life in order for the Lord to clearly guide and direct our hearts. People are willing to challenge our thinking. People that are willing to to love the messy parts of who we are. People that we can do life with. Now, making these kinds of relationships is is a critical choice. I've been blessed to have lived in several different parts of the Midwest. I, I grew up in the Chicago suburbs. I went to school in Michigan. I lived several years in Minnesota, and we've been uh, here in Wisconsin for the last 14 years. Making godly friendships has been a priority because I've recognized that I'm better when I have other people I'm doing life with, and people that I can rely on, people that need me, people that I, I invite into my home to be part of my, my family's life as well. Developing these kinds of relationships take time energy, and resources. But the result has always yielded fruit in my life that would not have come apart from these kinds of relationships. Because suddenly I've got people that that I can rely on and depend on, and in the same way, I have people in my life that that rely and depend on me. See, making the investment in friendships is like like making the investment in in something as trivial as cycling shoes. Cycling shoes uh, are something that, that improve the efficiency uh, for riders. Typically, people ride bikes in regular shoes with regular pedals, and, and this is fine and effective, but only to a certain point. If you want to be more efficient, more effective, and have an easier time pedaling, then you can choose to invest in cycling shoes. Cycling shoes are, are these hard surface shoes that make your cycling enthusiast friends look a little uh, uh, goofy and, and sound a little bit goofy when they walk around. I remember getting my first pair, pair of cycling shoes years ago. Uh, it was an investment of my resources because I had, to, I had to invest money in these new shoes and invest in new, a new set of pedals for them to lock into. It was an investment of my time in, in order to learn how to use these things. And the shoes lock into place, and, and the only way to unclip the shoes is to unclick, is to click your heel out in order to get the shoe to unlock. Otherwise, you are locked in place. And I remember riding up and down uh, my, my driveway a few times to get used to these things, right? And so I, I was, I was drive, riding around the driveway, and then I kind of made it into the street, and I'd got, got my confidence in unclipping and making sure that I was leaning the right way as I'd unclip. And so I thought I was ready to go out for a ride. And so I remember getting to the very first stoplight. And I'm, as I'm approaching the stoplight, I'm trying to slow down, and as, as I try to unclip, for some reason, I just couldn't get my heel to click out. And so I knew I had two choices. I had one choice to either just fall over and uh, just completely land on the ground and hopefully not get hurt in the process, or slightly lean on the car that was to my left. And so I chose, I'm going to slightly lean to the car on, uh, to my left because I could not get my heel to unclip. And I remember like looking at the guy, Unfortunately. fortunately, he thought it was funny because here, here's this uh, guy in, in spandex that's about to tip over. But I, I'm, I remember like slightly leaning on his car, fortunately not scratching anything, and, and yelling at him, it's my first time with, with uh, clip-in shoes. And he just is, is laughing. And so fortunately, nobody was hurt. The car wasn't hurt. But what makes cycling shoes more efficient than just tennis shoes is you have this hard surface that goes over the entire foot. Uh, if you're just using tennis shoes and a pedal, your downward force is limited to how much, you, how much foot is on the pedal. But if you've got cycling shoes, your entire foot becomes that downward force, increasing your efficiency. Being locked in increases your, your rotational force because you're not only able to push down as you're cycling, but you're able to pull up. And so what happens is you get this more efficient, more effective process. Cycling shoes maximize that efficiency and effectiveness, ultimately making the ride easier for the rider. Now, don't get hung up on needing to go and buy a pair of cycling shoes. That is not the point. If you enjoy riding, continue to enjoy riding. The point I'm trying to make is that many people feel perfectly fine going through life without making the investment of having godly friendships to encourage and grow their faith. You see, it's easier for us to say that that we've been hurt in the past. I don't want to go through the time of building these kinds of relationships. And the truth is, we can get through life without having these kinds of close friendships. 
But if we want to increase the efficiency and maximize the effectiveness of navigating life, then we're going to need godly relationships in our life to challenge our faith and to grow our faith. Friends, life is easier with others in it because we have people we can turn to for support and people we can support along the way. You see, God uses other people in our life to help grow our faith, and that won't happen apart from these godly relationships. And God uses you to minister to other people, those people that you've decided to do life with. See, God ministers to us through our godly friendships. Philia, close friends, are used by God to speak to us in ways that just aren't possible on our own. On my own, I hear my voice as God's voice. On my own, I silence the Holy Spirit on the issues I don't want to deal with in my life. By myself, I'm going to give myself a pretty good report on how I'm doing in life. On my own, my inner critic can be quite cruel. By myself, I can become quite despondent about how this world is going. But godly relationships help bring us out of that. Godly friendships are necessary if we want to grow in our faith. You see, there's a limit to how much I can grow on my own. There's a limit to how much I can hear from God by myself. There's a limit to how much growing I can do as a believer. I need other people in my life that I can turn to to be able to hear God's voice more clearly. Author C.S. Lewis says, Christ, who said to the disciples, you have not chosen one another, but I have chosen you for one another. The friendship is not a reward for our discrimination and good taste in finding one another out. It it is an instrument by which God reveals to each the beauties of all the others. Our view of God grows as we discover and celebrate the incredible work God is doing through the lives of other people. I have opportunities to grow in my faith as I practice grace and learn to be giving. Solomon encourages us to to develop these kinds of relationships in our life. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if, if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. And Solomon's directing our hearts toward community. Uh, He's he's reminding us of the importance of not doing life alone, that we should have friends that that we're walking through this life with. He shows us that life is easier when other people are in it. Too many of us struggle alone by ourselves, and yet God has designed us to be in community with other people. Solomon also provides direction in what godly friendships and relationships look like and how they function. Proverbs 27, 6 says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Again, the encouragement is, is not just having a buddy. Right? It's not just having a, a, a person in our life that, that we, we're just friends with. The encouragement is that we would have meaningful relationships with people that are willing to speak truthfully into our life. Sometimes it might hurt, but in the end, those words are meant to make us more like Jesus. See, spiritual friendship goes deeper than having a, a mutual admiration club. It's developing a high regard for one another. It's valuing one another. This is what it means for us to esteem or value each other in our relationships. Like we spoke about last week as we were looking at Storge, this is caring enough about a person that you're willing to say the hard things in order to see them become more like Christ and being willing to listen when someone has something difficult to say to you. God knows that we are better when we do life with other people. We can make the choice to isolate and insulate ourselves from others. 
But the downside is that we limit our own potential in that, in that situation. You know, having spiritual friendships makes this life easier to navigate because we're not alone when, we're, when we fall. We've got somebody there to, to walk through difficult situations with us. We have people that we can go to before we, we make those bad decisions to see, are we thinking clearly? Are we, are we in line with Scripture? Friends, you are designed for brotherly love. Few people value spiritual friendships because few people have experienced it in their own life. Who are the people in your life that you would identify as your spiritual friendship, friend, friends? Your next move is to identify two or three people in your life. People that, that are encouraging you to be more like Jesus. And can you identify people in your life that you are encouraging to be more like Christ? This is what we're designed for. God has, has given us instruction on, on how to, to live this life well. This life is difficult on our own. And, and if, when, whenever we decide to let people in, to develop these kinds of spiritual relationships, philia, then we, we have the ability to live life a little bit easier as we maximize our potential and energy and effort together. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to be challenged by your word. Lord, we thank you that you have designed us for community. Not just community with you, but community with others. May we, may we understand this value uh, that you've, you've established for us, Lord. May we embrace it. And Lord, may we do everything we can to develop these important relationships in our lives. We thank you for this time together, and we thank you for the challenge of your word. It's in your son's name we pray these things. Amen. Well, my benediction comes out of 2 Corinthians 13. May you aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. I want to thank you for joining us this morning. If you came ready with your gifts and offering, we have our joy box. You can mail a check into the church, or you can always give online. God bless. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. Every day we go through the simple routine of getting dressed in the morning, taking a shower, brushing our teeth, yet we give very little consideration to what life would be like if we did not have access to basic hygiene items. There are people in our community struggling and we can make a difference. We are partnering with our local radio station, The Family, and their annual Help for the Homeless Hygiene Drive. Throughout this month, as you have opportunity, pick up a few extra hygiene items to serve those in need. Items can be dropped off at the donation box in the church lobby on Sundays before noon and Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Let's be the church.